All right. So over the last few months, you guys may have heard me mention a podcast by the name of Who Are These Podcasts, which I've become a fan of because we have a lot of uh, targets, the likes of uh, Tom Myers and Opie and Howard Stern that we like bashing here. But all, really what this is, is uh, me preemptively befriending Carl so that he never discovers this podcast and shits on us. That's really all this is, Carl. Smart move, Mike. Very smart move. Others have tried this before you and not pulled it off, but you've pulled it off, my friend. <laughs> my real fear is I would never be on your radar until right now, and now you're just going to fuck with us. <laughs> right. That has happened as well, yeah. Who's, uh? well, I guess I, I let's start at the beginning, because uh, were you just a radio fan that started a podcast, or is this not the first thing you've done? No, this is the first thing I did. Uh, just a radio fan, always listen to talk radio, sports radio, political, morning shows. Just always really enjoyed that. Started a podcast, stealing from uh, Opie and Anthony's Jocktober format. Right. That was always my favorite segment on Opie and Anthony. I looked forward to October because I knew there'd be uh, Jocktober segments every yeah. morning. And uh, so, yeah, so we, we took that idea. My buddy is a stand-up. He moved out to Seattle and then Portland. And we thought this would be a good excuse to get together once a week and shoot the shit. Uh, he has since left the show, but I've kept it going. Well, that was the, that was the other thing I wanted to ask you is it's amazing to me. You have this rotating uh, crew of co-hosts, I guess, and they all seem like I can't get one. My producer's a fucking moron. I can't get one guy that can I can talk back and forth with for an hour a week. Uh, yeah. I'm amazed at the rotation you guys have. You all have good chemistry and everything. I, it's interesting, too, because most of the co-hosts are friends of mine and I play in bands and I, I know a lot of people from music. Right. And when you in band practice together, you're shooting the shit anytime you're not playing music. So it's very natural to have conversations about whatever you're, you're talking about. And it's, what's crazy to me is that we've had Shuli Egar from Howard Stern. We had Anthony Cumia. We've had Dick Masterson, all of right. these really great uh, co-hosts come on. And when I read the people in the subreddit, they, they always say, we just like it when your friends come on and do the show with you. Right. Yeah, I can. I mean, Anthony, I loved because I'm just such a big Opie and Anthony fan. But yeah, other than that, I think that's what's fun about it is it's just friends bashing the shit out of podcasts. Was there a, did you have a specific target in mind when you started this? No, not at all. In fact, that's what that's the interesting part is. We didn't really have any type of audience at all until our 107th episode. Right. And that was the one where we made fun of Opie Radio because Opie didn't have a podcast for the first two years we were doing the show. Yeah. And then he got fired from Sirius, took some months off, got onto Westwood One, started Opie Radio. And it was good that it worked out that way because by the time I made fun of Opie, I was pretty used to the format and, and how to do this. And they got picked up by a lot of different people. And uh, someone put it up on YouTube and it had like 70,000 views in the first day. So that's I think that weird. might be the first, the first time I heard about you guys was either uh, Opie or come town. I remember hearing about you guys, <laughs> yeah. and you bash them. Do you ever get a lot of show? Oh, this is what I wanted to ask you. Cause yeah. I was listening to your uh, latest episode and you talked about having, I think over a thousand one star reviews, which is incredible. Over 1,100 one-star reviews on Apple, yes. That's got to be, is that all fans of the podcast you go after, or do you, does your audience just hate you that much? It's, it's, it's always fans or hosts of the podcast that we go after, get right. very butthurt about it, and then they go on and do that. I always tell people who like our show to give us five stars and then shit all over us in the review section. So when people just read through it, it's all negative. Yeah. So it's very confusing to people what's going on <laughs> at the show. Well, that's, you know, it's funny. It, it, it had to be come town the first time I heard about you guys, because I'm a fan of theirs. And I remember my immediate thought was, oh, fuck these assholes. And then you went after Opie and I was like, all right, I, I get what this guy's doing. I like this. By the way, I love Nick Mullen and Stavi. I've seen Stavi do stand up a few times. Yeah, very funny. Nick Mullen is brilliant. He's hilarious. But my first exposure to come town I, I it wasn't their best episode probably right, but right i didn't get it i knew it had a huge audience i knew it was a lot of x o and a people who were listening to it and they're just talking about like doo-doo in their pants and stuff for an yeah, hour yeah. I'm, like, I'm like i don't know what this is and well, i've got i mean uh, that, who have come down another thing i like about you guys is you don't really give a fuck and when people come at you and do the same thing it's a brilliant defense honestly <laughs> that you shit on all these other podcasts and when they come after you you're like yeah, we are at, we do, uh, we are one trick ponies that just shit on people that are creating things. Well, also if people roast us back, I'll play it on the show. 
Exactly. I have no yeah. problem. Someone goofing on me. I get made fun of for my appearance quite a bit. People make fun of me because like you said, I don't have any talent. I just play up clips of other people's shows who actually yeah. run real shows and all these kinds of things that I hear. And uh, actually just this past week, we played a show where these guys it's called comedy pot pie. It's a show. No one's ever heard. of. I was listening before. to that. Yeah. Yeah. So those guys found out that we made fun of them. And they thought they were going to bash us back, and it's so bad. It, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing when people can't – playing along is always the best way to go. Yes. But, but yeah. when you get people that don't do it, like that comedy pop pie, I was listening to your – I never heard of them before. Um, but basically, their entire defense was like, hey, we know we sucked, but fuck you for pointing it out. Right, yeah. Which is like, well, I, if you know you kind of suck at times, then make fun of yourself for it. I, I was amazed – at their response was, yeah, we put out some bad podcasts, but we were just testing out our equipment. It's like, well, you can test your equipment without uploading the show, creating a logo, you know, developing a website. You don't need any of those things to test your equipment. No, I, it would be great. I, I, we should put that Steel Panther conversation you and I had up. That'll be great. I'm like, well, I, yeah, we set it into the microphone. I have to put it up now. That, that's the amazing thing about this. And because sometimes people go after me for being overly harsh and critical of some people, but sure. you have to remember, I'm not peering into someone's bedroom and goofing on them for their performance. Right. What I'm doing is they're putting it up online. They want people to hear it. They're putting it out there specifically. So people do hear it. I then play it on my show and tell them they suck really bad. And then <laughs> I get a lot of people going, well, why would you do that? What did I ever do? You put this shitty thing on the internet for people to find. That's what you did. Right. And that's, and you know what? I, to, to defend those people a little bit, I think if you came after me and I had no idea what your podcast was or anything, my immediate instinct would be like, fuck this guy. But that's my problem. <laughs> like I'm putting out a podcast. And I've had, to learn, I've had to learn that over time where like, hey, I'm putting out a podcast. On the, on the planet, 99% of the people aren't even going to listen to it. <laughs> so I have to realize that I'm not everybody's fucking cup of tea, you know? And Mike, it's, just, it's, it's a hard there. thing to get through your head though. I've been listening to your show a bit and I disagree. I think you have a very good sense of humor. I don't think you would be like, fuck this guy. If we go, oh, I would be, I, I get a, I get overly sensitive at times for sure. I've been better at it the last uh, year or so, I think, but definitely. Well, you, you got to think logically because the guy who really reacted the wrong way was stuttering John Melendez, former Howard Stern retired. Oh, to the, and to he, the point where he's on my list to talk to you about. And I have no interest in him. <laughs> like right. I wouldn't, I never list. I don't think he's, until I listened to your podcast, I didn't think he was a particularly bad guy or anything, but his reaction to you guys fascinates me. Well, that's the thing. So we did a, a episode years ago of the Stuttering John podcast, and I thought we would just talk about him that one episode and never again, like most podcasts that we review, we just move on and do the next thing. He responded so poorly by telling, you know, he's going to break my legs and he knows people who could do things to me in New York and all this stuff. It's like, wait a second. All right. If you're going to respond <laughs> like that, then I'm going to have to talk about you. You got to think about what are you trying to accomplish? Right. You know, that's why I don't think you would have said shit because you're, you're a logical person. You think, all right, what do I, what am I trying to accomplish? Do I want to get more notoriety for this person who's talking shit about me? Do I think he's going to shut up if I talk about him a lot? Right. Like the right. best thing to do, if you don't like what we say is to ignore us, which is what Opie has done. Well, what? Uh, okay, well, I was gonna ask if Opie had done that because maybe the if stu I don't know what kind of audience Stuttering John has, but whatever he does have, I'm assuming is from the Howard Stern era, I would think, sure. and that kind of an audience would love what you're doing. Oh, so yeah. for him to not, it's it's a complete disregard of his audience to be like, look at these assholes. What are they making fun of people? Yeah, that's what fucking Howard Stern did for thirty years. Yeah. So are you familiar with Radio Gunk? I wanted to ask you about them too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a whole forum online of ex Howard Stern fans, people who loved the old Howard Stern show. And a lot of those people, there's a lot of overlap between our, our shows because they also have a podcast uh, yeah, because yeah. yes, our show, I mean, I grew up with Howard Stern and Opie and Anthony and Don and Mike. And it's like, our show is built for people who liked that type of radio that doesn't mm -hmm. exist anymore and want to come over and check that out, which is why, yeah, Centering John is making all the wrong moves here by calling <laughs> me out. Should have joined forces. Well, the thing I wanted to ask you about Radio Gunk, do you have like any sort of relationship with them or anything? I don't. We made fun of their show. They reacted poorly to it, which oh, okay. I was surprised by because they all they do is talk shit. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm also the, a guy who talks shit. Can, do, you don't get this format? This is what and they talk shit about themselves. They make fun of how they laugh too much and all that shit. Well, it was interesting. So they didn't take it well that we made fun of them. And then over the months and years since then, we kind of have some common enemies. 
And so I reached out to Monique, the host of that show, mm -hmm. to come on WATP and we could chat about it. I don't know if it was Brent Hatley or something. And uh, she, she turned me down. She's just like, well, why, you, you made fun of me. Why would I go on your show? I'm like, oh, okay. Well, then you don't get it. Never mind. Yeah. People get very, very emotional. But so that's what I wanted to say about Radio Gunk because I do, I, it was so, it struck me as such a similar kind of format, except they focus on Stern. Yeah. But what you guys do is have fun. Although I, th I do think, uh, is it Vinny that co hosts with you sometimes? Yeah. From I think he, pop. I would hate to have him on if you guys were making fun of me because I think he genuinely hates these people. <laughs> he <laughs> gets angry. <laughs> but uh, Radio yeah. Gunk seems so angry yeah. at Howard Stern where it's like, then don't listen, you know, have a little fun with it. Like you guys seem like you're fucking around. They seem, they have a vendetta against Howard Stern for some reason. That was the thing I pointed out because I was listening to their show and they're goofing on Howard Stern. This is a few years back when Stern had to go and induct Bon Jovi into the rock and roll hall of fame. Right. So they're playing this episode of Howard Stern and they're goofing on him because he's not edgy anymore and he's woke and all this kind of stuff, sure. which is fine. I, I goof on him for that too. But then they play his speech at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which was uh, offensive and vulgar. And you get the radio gun people going, what if there are children there? Why would he say something? I'm like, well, yes. what, what, do you, what do you want him to do then? You're just going to critique everything he does? You got to like the old Howard Stern when he comes out from time to time. If they had a video of Howard Stern walking down the street and waving at a, an old lady, they'd be like, oh, this motherfucker. Like, they'd get so angry about it. Like, he, anything he does, <laughs> they freak out over. It he loses never do anything meaning. right. Yeah, it loses all meaning when you're critiquing every single thing that someone does. And right. trust me, there's a lot to critique with Howard Stern. And any podcast that I listen to, there's a lot to critique. I don't necessarily bring on the parts that I enjoy. Sometimes I do. Sure. But that's sure. not as fun. But I'm going to go in there and just kind of pick out the things that suck and explain why they suck. And that's kind of the goal of the show, not to just like trash every single thing. And, and look at the shoes this guy's wearing. What an ass. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. I mean... <laughs> Well, have you ever gotten to now that you're like, a, you know, you're running a successful podcast and people expect it out every week. Have you gotten to a point where it's kind of late in the week and you think there's a podcast that's going to suck and you're like, I kind of like them. Like, what the fuck do I do? And you have to make something out of it or do you just pivot at that point? Yeah, this actually, that's a good question. That does happen to me from time to time. Or I'm listening to a podcast it's just so boring that there's really nothing to talk about. Right. The good news is for the show, the way that the show format works now, because it's evolved over the years, is I have reoccurring segments where we could talk about Opie or Stuttering John. There's this guy, Patrick Michael. There's Tom Myers, as you brought up. Yeah. So I can always just keep that segment of the show short if there's not a lot to talk about or nothing really compelling or maybe I kind of liked it. Then I'll keep that part short and then we can move on to the other parts that a lot of people tune in just for the reoccurring segments anyway. Who I've I've heard you mention this Patrick Michael on a few episodes and you brought him yeah. up now. Who the fuck is he? I've I've never heard of him, but I hear you mention him fairly often. Patrick Michael is a fascinating character. He's the most prolific podcaster in the history of podcasting. He's hosted more shows than anyone else ever. We're talking probably close to a hundred at this point, different shows. The hilarious part about it is that they all sound exactly the same. Right. And the guy has nothing to say. He like reads wiki pages or yeah. he talks about his life. He does nothing. He's, he's a boring guy. And it's, Boy, it's, the, the really more you're way. talking, I hate to think that the listeners are thinking, oh, this all sounds a lot like Blind Mike, but <laughs> no, it started 10 million Patrick, different podcasts. Patrick Michael is really just an enigma and a very interesting character. Now, what's happened with him recently, which is kind of bumming me out, is he's caught wind that the only reason why his show is popular is because we promote him right. and not in a good way. And so now he's kind of like lashing out at us on a lot of his shows and just talking about how much we suck. And it's kind of gets, you know, I you like give, you've given him content basically. Right. I, see, I like to, uh, I like to observe. I don't want to necessarily be a part of it, you know? Right. So when, when they start barking back at me over and over and over again, it's the same stuff. I'm like, okay, now you're getting boring. Yeah. Now I don't want to talk about it anymore. Has, has a podcast ever turned you where you, you get enough recommendations that you check them out and you're like, I like these guys. Like what the, why would I, why would I make fun of them? Yes. Uh, that happened to me with uh, the Dick show. And now we're friends with Dick Masterson, but we originally, I just went into that blind and we just did a review of that show. Yeah. Uh, Come town was another one that I didn't really understand. And, and now I, I dig it and I, I totally get where they're coming from. There's been a few, um, the, the, the guy who has, 
I think it's the only podcast that has more one star reviews than we do is a guy named uh, Michael Rappaport. You familiar with uh with Oh, Rapp- yeah. I know you like Rappaport. Yeah. Maybe it's my barstool bias, but yeah. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally understand. And so when he went after the stoolies and had that whole debacle happen, yeah. he got like tens of thousands of one Oh, star I remember. Yeah. From all the, all the barstool folks. Uh, but that show... I really enjoyed it. I don't know what's going on with Rappaport now. He's like going on TV and crying about the hate. I don't, he used to be really funny. I loved him on Howard Stern and stuff, but I don't know. He's behind a paywall and I don't listen to him anymore. Yeah. I, I, I didn't have an issue with Rappaport before the Barstool stuff, but it's weird to do what he does and then go into a world like Barstool and then be like, they're bullying me. Yeah. That seems like an odd move. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make any sense. By the way, I wanted to ask you a question or two that might be really boring. For no, go audience. for it. I, so I was, I was popping on your most recent episode and you start off talking about Craig and Kirk and you're throwing out all these acronyms and shows and oh, I had no okay, idea yeah, what yeah. you were talking about yeah. for 20 minutes. I was like Googling feverish. <laughs> what the fuck? What is he talking about? So this Kirk, Kirk Minahan. Yeah. Kirk so, Minahan. Yeah. Kirk, Kirk Minahan. All yeah. right. So I, I don't, I don't do as much uh, sports talk these days as I used to. Uh, but obviously very, very popular. Oh, it's not a sports show. I I, I guess if you Google him, a, a lot of people think that because he used to work for uh, EEI here in Boston. Yeah. But he's almost got, he's gotten to the point where he basically hates sports other than golf pretty much. But okay. he's like, I mean, like n- knowing the kind of radio you like, I think you would like uh, the Kirk Minahan show. Yeah. But it's I, also, I, much really? like you said about Come Town, the first episode you listen to, you're not going to know what the fuck's going on most likely. <laughs> right, right. No, I, I understand that. A lot of these shows evolve over time. I really make it a point that anytime someone comes and listens to their first episode of who are these podcasts, they'll pick up on what we're doing right away. I explain exactly what we're doing and why we're doing it. And you know, it does take time obviously because things evolve and to understand why it's so funny to goof on stuttering John or some of the things that we do, you have to build that up a little bit, but uh, no, I, I totally get that. It's hard to like hop into a show. That's the, 200th episode or even 50th episode yeah and, yeah and there's just a lot of inside references and he's created a whole world and you know it's it's you know not dissimilar from like stern and opie and anthony and that sort of thing where if you listen the first day and there's infighting going on or so you're not going to know what the fuck they're talking about so how did you connect with uh, kirk um so i was an intern for barstool uh years ago and then through that, I just reached out to him to do my podcast at the time. And then uh, I worked as a lowly street teamer at Entercom, where I did another podcast there and asked him to do it again. So I just kind of kept in touch with him over the years. And then when he started his podcast at Barstool, I just bugged him to get on. And then uh, here I am on twice a week now. Nice. So the question I have is, have you been blind all your life? Or is this a more recent occurrence? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm legally blind and it's deteriorated over the years. Like I was diagnosed with uh, Star Guards when I was in second grade. Um, but like when I was a kid, I could pass for uh, like when I was like, you know, going out with girls and shit, I wouldn't tell them because I could get away with it. You know, I might have to get a little close to the menu or whatever. But other than that, I, I could kind of get away with it. Now there's no chance either you you think this is a blind guy or this is a severely mentally deranged drunken fool or both sure yeah yeah right. well exactly so the reason why i ask is because if i couldn't see sports would not be on my radar i don't like listening to the play-by-play on the radio so i'm surprised that you were part of like the bar stool and you know doing sports yeah well i used to be radio. a huge sports fan um, um but i think i found over the years that what I liked about sports more than anything was like the gossip and storylines and shit like that more than the actual games. And then that kind of shifted to my interest in comedy and stand up and podcasting and radio and shit like that. Because you're right. Like if I'm watching uh, football and baseball, I'll still watch because I can at least kind of tell what's going on. But like if I'm watching a hockey game, I have no fucking clue what's happening. <laughs> That's interesting. Do you get into pro wrestling at all? No. Okay. Cause I feel like if you're more into the gossiping and uh, storylines, cause I, I used to watch wrestling. My buddy Vinny Paulino is the biggest wrestling fan in the world. Yeah, and so he's yeah. talking about it all the time. 
And I used to enjoy, I didn't like the wrestling matches. I don't care about the guys flopping around right. in the ring, but I liked all the shit talking and the storylines and, you know, the yeah, soap Yeah, so you know what? That's fun. funny. Like, uh, my girlfriend tries to get me into, like, The Bachelor and shit because she knows yeah. I love gossip. <laughs> but, right, like, right. I kind of need it to be real. <laughs> you know, like, I can't. That makes more sense, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't get behind a fucking, you know, this Sunday, brother. I'm like, all right. Like it's all, it all seems a little too far. And I don't besmirch like people that do like wrestling. I also hate people that are like, well, you know, it's fake. Don't you? It's like, yeah, it's just like watching a, a different version of a TV show. So I don't besmirch people that like wrestling, but it's just not for me really. No, I get it. It makes sense. And I, honestly, I've gotten away. I used to be a huge sports fan, listen to sports radio all the time and, and read all the newspapers. And I've gotten away from it a little bit because I realized as a Buffalo Bills fan, that it was affecting my mood in a negative way that I was yeah. committing so much time and energy into watching these assholes lose. And I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? I should probably stop caring so much. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about sports talk radio too, is it got very boring for me. Like uh, when a guy like Kirk was on EEI, I was glued to the radio because even if they were talking sports, he made it interesting because he liked, he was interested in the controversies or shit going on off the field or whatever. But it's what sports radio has become because they've gotten rid of all those kind of guys is now so formulaic that it's exhausting to the point where uh, Felger and Maz here in Boston is the number one sports talk radio show. And they, it's a four hour show and they do two hours with like their segments and talking points and all that. And then the next two hours, they repeat all those talking points in the same order. Yep. Act like they didn't have the discussion in the first two hours. It's bizarre. No, that's what radio is, though, because radio is 15 to 30 minute segments when someone's in their car yeah, and they don't expect someone to listen to a four hour show. And that's what changed everything with podcasting. And when you hear radio guys go into podcasting, it takes them a while to figure this out. It's like, no, yeah. now someone's going to listen for the entire show. Everyone who listens to your show is going to listen to the entire show where it used to be, ah, um, you probably didn't hear this yesterday, but so-and-so called in. They're going to be calling back in again today. It's like you have to continue to reset what's going on all the time on radio it's weird well do you so uh the one show of yours i did i mentioned to kirk um was do you remember doing a show called planet mikey yes yes that's a boston guy so that guy he was on eei for years yeah and uh he's a perfect example of a sports like a, a radio guy like you're saying that for whatever reason when they get into podcasting, I guess just have they have no grasp of it because they're like, okay, we need to do segments and we need to do, uh, you know, sports updates and th and it's like that's just not how podcasting works. Yeah, radio. By the way, you said um, sports talk radio is bad. Yeah. All radio is bad. It's oh, gotten for sure. so, yeah. and especially because it has to compete with podcasts now. So there's just it's no contest. There's nothing. There's no radio show I would listen to over a podcast at, at any time. But yeah, yeah well, I lo I love these old school guys. I can always tell. When you're listening to a guy who spent years on the radio and now they're trying to do a podcast and they just can't figure it out. I remember when I first listened to Opie doing his podcast, he kept resetting where they were. It's like, all right, so anyway, we're down here at blah, 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 bar. And uh, oh, yeah. we're down here again. And so-and-so is with us. It's like, Opie, no one's just tuning in now, you moron. It's all the weird thing. So Opie, for those of you that don't know, Opie would used to do his show at a bar called Gepard's yes. in uh, New York. And the bizarre thing about it was he was not doing a live show. Right. And he was not promoting, like, he wouldn't tell you when he was there or anything. So right. he's not promoting it so that you go down to the next show that he's at. Right, because it's not even being amplified in the place. He's just talking into a, a handheld recorder with his buddy and just like passing it around. It would be like me continuously mentioning, we're here in my house in my six by 10 office. It's right. like, there's, what are they going to stop by? <laughs> oh, he, he would say it over and over again, keep resetting who's, who he's with. Oh yeah, right now, you know, we got uh, Carl's here and uh, Vic Henley's showing up. And it's like, Opie, we know. Yeah, <laughs> It's well, fine, we get it. Yeah, well, let's just get into Opie. I have so many other questions for you, but I let you, we might as well just get into Opie because okay. I'm fascinated by the guy. You and too. when I've listened, all I've heard of him in the last, you know, six months or whatever, or probably more than that, is uh, from your show. Like you talking about him or maybe the occasional clip of Anthony talking about him. Yeah. And he seems like a man who is genuinely like mentally unwell at this point. I can't figure out what he's trying to accomplish anymore because – when he started his podcast, so Opie from Opie and Anthony, they were on 
you know, XM, they were on Sirius. Obviously, they're on some big stations in New York and Boston and Philadelphia. So they have a huge fan base to begin with. He starts OP Radio. He premiered it around number two, I think, on iTunes at the time. Yeah. So he had a huge audience of people. He's lost them all. He is right, now right. down to talking on Facebook Live to a few dozen people and then putting that out as a podcast. And I got to think that's just depressing. Like, why wouldn't you just quit? I mean, you're, you're embarrassing yourself. It's depressing. And, uh, you know, if you go to patreon.com slash blind mic, you can find the episode we did about Opie. And uh, what we were wondering was, when did he develop this thing where he's like talking like this? And thank you so much, man. I don't yeah. ever remember. Like I listened to him for years and he never had that weird cadence. Is that him trying to be funny or? Yeah. So he learned from this guy, Brother Weez. And Brother Weez is uh, this mainstay in Rochester. He's been on the radio forever. I think he just entered the Radio Hall of Fame. And what it is, it's style over substance. And it's something that I pointed out about Weez for years. And now Opie's doing the same thing where he doesn't have anything to say. He's not an interesting person. Right. So instead, he just puts out these voices. Isn't this crazy? <laughs> what are you doing? It's, you're, a, you're an adult man. You're almost 60. What are you I'll doing? I'll say this, though. Like, so apart, Opie, Anthony, and Jim Norton, I do think all of their strengths, as much as I love bashing Opie, I do believe his strength was... Uh, he gives himself way too much credit for bringing in comics. Like, I think that was all Norton, I would assume. Sure, yeah. But I think his strength that the other two guys uh, are either reluctant to do or aren't as good at or whatever it is. But Opie was great at stirring shit. But if you are alone on the beach yelling at commenters, <laughs> you're not, you can't do that. So, like, He's his one real strength was completely taken away. Yes. Yeah, I know his show now. And it, it's, it's kind of sad because he used to have this guy, Carl Ruiz, who was his buddy. He's a chef. He was starting mm -hmm. up this big restaurant in Manhattan. And so he was a character on the show. They would, you know, it was terrible, but at least there was like some personality and yeah. they would get into it a little bit. Now Opie's by himself. He has no friends and he's talking. He's just talking to people who are in the chat on Facebook and it's the worst possible format for him. Because you're right. He needs other people there who are funny, who are interesting. He can stir shit up with, get conversations going. And I didn't even realize when I listened to Opie and Anthony religiously that Opie was as bad as he is. I never, yeah. like, I, I remember like there were days when uh, maybe Anthony called in sick or, or maybe Jimmy wasn't there. And I'd be like, uh, and then the days that Opie wasn't there and it was Jim and Anthony, like, yeah, this is awesome. So yeah. I knew he was the weak point of the show, but I had no idea how devoid of talent he actually is until now you've taken him out. And we've seen, we've seen Jim Norton do his thing. We've seen Anthony do his thing. I mean, Opie just cannot maintain anything. He's lost. Like I said, his entire audience is gone. He's proven to the world that he has no talent. Yeah. It's amazing how much like when you're a fan of a show like that, because there's a, there's a lot of this you can point to with Stern as well, but like uh, with Opie and Anthony, same thing. Like when I knew Opie was not my favorite of the three, but I just thought of it as I find Anthony and Jim really funny. Like I don't find Opie as funny. Right. And, and then he, like, he would admit that too. He's like, I'm not the funny one. It's fine. Right. But then when he's apart from them or when you see a compilation video of his atrocious moments on <laughs> YouTube yeah. or whatever, yeah. then it, like when it, when that breaks for whatever reason it is, like you can go years without realizing something. And then when whatever occurrence breaks that wall for you, you can never unsee it. <laughs> And now if I go back and listen to old ONA clips, I cannot unhear the way he says things, the way he interrupts people, the bitchy tone he has a lot. Yes, I definitely hear it differently now when I go back and listen to the show. Things I didn't even pick up on yeah. now. I'm very noticeable, especially since Anthony and Jim have both come out and talked about what a cunt he was to work <laughs> with. And well, do you have the thing of... Was. was that? And what a little bitch he was all oh, the time. Yeah. <laughs> do you have the thing of, as a fan... It's frustrating because like, I, I want, to, I feel like, and I'm certain I, this wouldn't actually work in real life, but like when I listen to him now, I think to myself, if I could get like 30 minutes with him and yeah. be like, Opie, don't you see, this is why people don't like you. <laughs> like, but I'm sure that's been tried 10 million times before. It, that thick headedness is what's I think frustrating about both Opie uh, and Stern in a, a different type of way. Yeah, it's interesting. So those two are have a lot of parallels, a lot of similarities between those two radio personalities. Yeah. If yeah. you look at Opie now, he doesn't talk to 
anyone who was a part of the old show. Right. Nobody in his life currently was a part of that show, probably for the reason that you just said. They all want to sit down and be like, Opie, why are you doing this? What are you doing? You know, a guy like Iraq was the best intentions tries to reach out to him, tries to keep the friendship going, and Opie just rejects it because he doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to hear what an asshole he is. He doesn't want to fix himself. He just wants to be Opie. And Howard Stern, same thing. I mean, you look at Howard Stern. Is he friendly with anyone who was on that show? I mean, people he spent years with or decades with, and he just shuts them out of his life as soon as they're gone. It's bizarre behavior. Yeah, oh, there's that, there's that similarity completely, but the odd difference is, and I've always wondered about this, is like the core of that show. If you can, well, I mean, like, you know, obviously Fred, Robin, and Gary, but even like Richard and Sal, Benji, a couple others have all, I don't know, that might be it, but that group has all been there 20 plus years. Yes. So it's amazing that he can have that loyalty, yet also completely pretend Gilbert Godfrey doesn't exist or that Artie Lang never happened. Or whoever, you know, whoever the guest was or, uh, you know, back office person or whatever, where he's able to just like Jackie Martling, to my knowledge, never had a real falling out with Stern. Right. But Howard kind of acts like he doesn't exist. Yeah. Stern Stern was trying to keep him when Jackie was renegotiating his contract and he was holding out. And then eventually the company's just like, okay, never mind and cut ties. But it wasn't because of Howard. And uh, yeah, that's the thing that he does. He loves to pretend that people don't exist anymore. You will never hear him mention Shuley's name ever again, or, or Brent Hatley, people who actually have left the show because they've had too much. I can't believe Richard Christie's still there. That guy is such a talent. He would be so great. If he started the Richard Christie show or him and sales started the show, they would crush it. More people would well, say, I don't, I don't know it. enough about them. I knew they do the prank calls and shit. That's all I really know. Oh, okay. I mean, they're, they're funny characters for sure. And Howard's gotten so boring. Yeah. That uh, these people like like Shuli did should really just leave the show and do their own thing because with the internet now and podcasting, more people are are able to. I mean, look at Joe Rogan's audience versus Howard Stern's current audience. I mean, it's not even close. Oh well, I mean, you can tell you can anytime uh, Howard Stern mentions Rogan, you can hear the jealousy oozing yeah. out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, and and Stern used to be like, I don't understand this podcasting thing. Who's listening to podcasts? Robin? He went after uh, Ari Shafir for that. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. He was yeah. calling out Ari. I remember Shuli talking about that. It might've been a private conversation and he was going, I, I wanted to run to the studio and scream at him and explain how, <laughs> how good Ari's doing and, and how successful he is. And like, right. Howard just did not get it. No, that, I mean, that was, that was a very old man moment where he's like, you gotta make your bones in Wyoming on an AM station. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it doesn't work that way anymore. In fact, if you do that, you're an idiot. You're wasting your time. Right. It's uh. There's this guy real quick. There's this guy, Eric Zane, who uh, has been on the show a couple of times and he's an old radio guy. He used to be on the free beer and hot wing show that was syndicated to a lot of smaller markets. Now he is doing his podcast and he's growing it, the Eric Zane show. And the first few times I've had him on my show a few times, we made fun of him. And the first few times I had conversations with him, he was like, Carl, why wouldn't you become a consultant for radio stations? Or why wouldn't you try to get a job in the radio? I'm like, why would I want to work for a radio station? Right. This has so much more potential to do things. You would, be, you would be a horrendous radio consultant because all your ideas would be good. <laughs> That's true. They don't like that. <laughs> That's true. No, but I, honestly, I have zero interest in being on radio. Now, 20 years ago, I would have loved that. Sure, opportunity sure. and i used to go on shows promote my band and stuff and would love that type of thing but now you'd be crazy to not start a podcast that's that's really the only place where you could actually make some money and the other well the other thing that howard disowned for whatever reason it like and you know he is fresh his hatred of opie and anthony or all these other you know quote knockoffs were that they were ripping his style off whether it be you know just shoot bullshitting or talking about sex, or I think the big thing was like infighting. Like Howard was kind of the first, maybe there were some before him, but the first really successful one to bring back office drama on the air. Right. Like that's why people love the Howard Stern show. Now, like you just mentioned, a guy like Shuley, who's there for 15 years. I don't know a lot about Brent Hatley, but I know he was a big character there. Those guys leave and Howard doesn't mention, or that that whole Scott the Engineer saga, that seems... Uh perfect for on air uh, talk, but it's like, it's like, it doesn't exist. I thought it was insane when Artie Lang left the show. Now when Artie left, it was because he was going into rehab and he was relapsing and he had a lot of drug problems and you know, it's pretty well documented and Howard kept him 
in the fold for a little while there. And then they just made a decision like Artie is persona non grata, never talk about him again. And it wasn't until uh, one of the prank caller, one of the guys who calls into the show, does all the impressions. I'm blanking on his name right now. Did a spot on Artie Lang impression. And oh, so, uh, uh, Sour Shoes. Sour Shoes. Thank you. So Sour Shoes would call in and start doing Artie Lang. And then finally, after years of pretending that never existed, which was, by the way, the greatest era of Howard Stern was with Artie Lang. For, for pretending that never existed. And then all of a sudden they have this guy on and they're chatting with him like it's, hey, remember Artie Lang for our show? Like, yes, we all remember Artie. Bring him out as a guest. Bring him back. We want you to talk to Artie Lang on the show. Why aren't you doing that? It's so weird. And then I like, I completely get why you would not want Artie Lang the employee. I right. like, I am adult enough to understand that maybe a uh, heroin addicted man who's sleeping at the microphone isn't the best employee yeah but Artie Lang the guest I guess his big crime was trying to kill himself like is that yeah. why he's not welcome in the Howard Stern show studio anymore I guess because Howard made it seem like they were bad for each other or Howard's just bad for Artie and he can't handle it and he doesn't want to do any more harm to him I don't know because you know they, they talk about they did have Jackie back on after they went over to, to satellite. They, mm -hmm. they brought Jackie back on as a guest. They gave him his own show on the channel and stuff like that. So I don't know why he wouldn't ever have Artie Lang back on the show. It'd be huge for him to do that. It's and by the way, yeah, the, have the you seen on that opportunity, by the way, because I mean, I can't believe you outlived Norm, but uh, we don't I know said that the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Well, that's uh, so I listened to Stern um, yesterday, I guess for the first time in forever uh because i wanted to hear what he would say about norm yeah and he didn't bring it up until nine okay you know like two hours in. i don't know if they started six or seven now so a couple hours in yeah. and uh so i you know arduously listened through this segment that is uh clearly planted phone calls and i think a lot of people Everything believe all their so calls are fake on now. that show now Come nothing is like spontaneous anymore it's crazy well, they had three people call in about threesomes. And Howard's like, Aren't, isn't this crazy? These people are having threesomes. I could never have a threesome. Yeah. It's like, Howard, it's not 1988. That's not <laughs> right. that foreign a concept. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, he's, so he's kind they, of lost it. They, they do that for like 45 minutes. And it's like, how do, you not, how do you have such a little knowledge of your fan base that you don't know people are tuning in to hear you eulogize? No, which... He finally got there and it was not bad. Like it wasn't terrible, but like, that's what people wanted to hear. Like your audience loved Norm Macdonald. How do you not get that? Well, you know, what's crazy about that too is I think Howard's a very intelligent guy. Sure. And it seems like he is going against anyone who would be from his audience's wishes in everything that he does. Everything that he's doing is to piss off people who liked Howard Stern when he was in his heyday which is fine if that's what he wants to do, if he wants to just like have a totally different audience and, and get rid of all those people who used to like him, except for the fact that he said on his summer vacation, it was ruined because of social media bashing him. So he does <laughs> care what people think and he does everything he can to piss those people off. I mean, yeah, if yeah. you go to his subreddit, Howard Stern subreddit, every single person on that subreddit hates his guts. They all hate listening oh to Howard God, yeah. and motherfuck him up and down. I remember so, when he, he shut down that Howard Stern fan network or whatever it was because they oh, just turned on. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, I mean, it happens to everyone. Don't get me wrong. Sure. It'll, it'll happen to me eventually too. It's fine. But it's bizarre that he would a care about it and B do everything possible to make it worse. Well, he hates his, he hates, he, I, I should, let me rephrase. It's worse than hating his audience. He's embarrassed by his audience. Yes. Like his audience is, uh, the, you know, Trump supporting uh, anti-vax people <laughs> that he ha hates so much. And you heard his comments last week where he's like, uh, you know, let him die or whatever the fuck he said. It's yep. like, but that's hit a lot of, not all of it, obviously, a ton of people listen to Stern from all walks of life, but a lot of it is those people. Like they loved Howard and he's <laughs> humiliated by that. I think he wants Jimmy Kimmel's audience. And if you listen to the, what each of those guys say, they're saying the same thing now. They're the same person. Well, Stern's comments were copying Kimball's from like the night before. Yeah. It was weird. And, and I, I don't think that he did that on purpose, but I think that they're both trying to attract that same audience that they can be proud of. Like, aren't, aren't we great liberal people who believe in science and 
go Fauci. You know, I think that's the people he wants listening to the show. Um, speaking of you uh, becoming a, a consultant, have you noticed, have you gone back and found anyone uh, who you've shit on and they've taken your advice in yes. later episodes? Yeah, actually, a lot of people have done that. And it's funny. So there's this guy, Doug, who's going to be coming on the show in a few weeks. Uh, he's from the show called the Who's Right podcast. And uh, Doug and Anthony are the co-hosts of the show. And he had reached out to me. And this is going before we were popular. This is going back to our like second year and wanted us to review his show, thinking that I was going to like it. He thought that he was so funny that I, that was going to be the one show I come out and go, you know what? I can't make fun of this one. This guy's great. God, but I still want to play it because I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, right. So instead, I pointed out everything wrong with the show and I bashed him. And he wrote to me and said, wow, Carl, I've actually learned a lot from this. And he changed a ton of things about the show. And that show has taken off now. They do really well. And Doug's been a longtime friend of who are these podcasts. So we bring him on as a, a guest host from time to time. And uh, that's been the case with a number of shows. The other one that I can think of is the official podcast with my buddy, Kaya Orson. Now, Kaya has this show that's huge because it's a bunch of YouTubers doing a show together. So as soon as they launched it, they already had a huge audience. And the show is four guys rambling about different topics. You know, they might have five or six topics. They spend an hour rambling about it. Sometimes they have a celebrity guest that they interview. And I pointed out everything wrong with the show and Kaya made a lot of changes to the show based on my critique that his audience hated and they had to resort back to the way it was before <laughs> because apparently they were doing the right thing for their audience. I'm not their audience. So I didn't get it, but they, they like it. So yeah. sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. The worst thing I think for people that want to uh, fire back at your podcast is uh, the, I, you've done a few podcasts that I like. And uh, generally your criticism of them is like, you know, there's really no structure to it. Like they're just showing up and saying, let's have a conversation, which can get a little uh, messy. <laughs> yeah, and and it's, uh, not a, it's not a show to me. Like that's the thing, because I'm an old school radio fan, I do feel like in order for it to be a show, there has to be something that makes it a show. Right. And just getting together and having a conversation on a whim to me is not a show. If you have... If you're structured around it and you know what you want to talk about, you've done some research, you know what you're going to say, you have some opinions or whatever, great. But a lot of these people just think they can turn on microphones and they're just going to be interesting and they're not. Usually right. they're not. Well, they all, I mean, that's an Opie and Anthony uh, symptom, I think. Like a lot of people yeah. listen to that show and said, oh, it's just guys shooting the shit. I can show up and do that too. And there's only a few shows that can do it. I think Shane Gillis's podcast. Yep. I think Shane can pull it off. Yeah. Uh, I think Comtown can pull it off. But there are very few, and even like a lot of these stand-ups, you think they can just sit down and just, yo, it's going to be hilarious. When we get together, we just bust each other's balls. It's so funny. And it usually isn't. Well, I, I mean, I did that for a while. Like, I mean, I wouldn't say my show has like a format now, but I'm at least <laughs> prepared for, for it. Whereas yeah. for a while, I thought like, eh, oh, Mikey can just turn on the mics and riff. <laughs> and tell, it was fucking horrible. <laughs> I can tell you have a format just from looking at the descriptions of the episodes. When you go in and you say, oh, here are the things that we hit on on the show today, I can tell that you prepped those things ahead of time right. and you knew what you were going to talk about. Sometimes that's all it takes. <laughs> right. But uh, so I was kind of leading to, I guess, uh, a lot of those shows I've heard fire back at you and the def the, the, the uh, I don't know, critique of you is always, well, who the fuck is this guy? He just does a podcast about right. other podcasts. But right. that is a horrible defense because your podcast is so like, it's unfortunate for them because I think who are these podcasts is so well formatted and you genuinely do such a good job of running the show along. So it's hard to be like, Oh, who's this hack? Because you're not that. And unfortunately by, the way, for them. by the way, Mike, that put a lot of pressure on me from day one. Cause if I'm going to go on and tell everyone their podcast sucks, then I better yeah, be, be good, yeah. buttoned up on my end or else it's not going to work. That form is the reason why Jack Tober worked for Opie and Anthony is because Opie and Anthony had millions of listeners and it was the funniest fucking show in the morning. So they can go on and bash anyone else's show. And you're like, yeah, these, these hacks suck. So for me to do that, a guy no one's ever heard of to come <laughs> on and be like, man, Kyle is the worst radio personality you've ever heard. Like I better know what I'm talking about. Be at least a little bit buttoned up in order to do that. Right. By the way, you mentioned uh, Jack Tober. Did you know, Carl? Uh, a twice Jocktober DJ got me fired from Entercom Radio. Really? You want to tell that story? Uh, 
Kennedy of Carson and Kennedy. Okay. Who was one of these uh, one of these people that they, they do uh, War of the Roses and um, what's the other one they do? Uh, they do a bunch of prank phone calls and that type of shit. There's another, they have another signature bit that I can't think of. You ever do the, the fugitive? The, the ten thousand dollar fugitive. I don't. That, that's something they would do for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So why which is, by the fun? way, uh, and not to go off on a tangent. I want to get back to that. But how bizarre is it that radio stations across the country think it's okay to do the exact same bit at fifty fucking stations? Yeah. Well, that that's the thing that Opie and Anthony exposed that I think was so important that Prep Burger Service or whatever it was called. Yeah. Where you, as a radio company as a radio station you would sign on to this company that would feed you content and they could feed they could make the content one time and feed it off into 100 radio markets because radio is so local that no one knows what boston radio is and la radio and so it it worked out really well and then open anthony come on they're listening to all these shows from all these different markets because they're all exactly the same and it's like uh uh-oh well (laughs) can't do that anymore now we know yeah so uh, they, they twice jocktobered uh, Carson and Kennedy. And then I, I was working on the street team and had to do a live event for uh, uh, whatever fucking st- mix 104 or whatever it is. And uh, Carson was there. It was like an appearance from uh, or Kennedy rather from Carson and Kennedy. And uh, she was over talking to us. And I had just started like I was still working at Entercom. Uh, but I was appearing on Kirk's show every day at the time. Mm-hmm. So someone must must have asked me something about it or mentioned Kirk's name or whatever. And she, like, you know, not part of the conversation, just kind of chimes in, oh, that guy's the biggest douche I've ever met in my life or something to that effect. Okay. And so the next day, <laughs> I bring up on Kirk's show, by the way, <laughs> someone at Intercom <laughs> is not a big fan of yours. Yeah. And so we started talking about that. That lady went to corporate, and said, why do we have this guy working for us? He's going on Kirk Minahan's show and shitting. So that's like a real badge of honor in my book, I think. Congratulations. And she's <laughs> dumb for thinking you wouldn't bring that up. I don't know how you would stop yourself from bringing something like that up. It's Yeah, like I called a guy that this guy works with a douchebag, and he, right. he mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. He thought that'd be fun content. No, yeah. no way. You I was calling that. people douchebags in a workplace setting. <laughs> Someone <laughs> yeah, mentioned it. <laughs> All I was doing was telling this guy that his friend's an asshole. I don't know why he decided to talk to him about <laughs> it. It's his beef. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> that's awesome. Congratulations on getting fired from fucking Entercom. I, <laughs> dude, I, street team, that's not like the worst job in the world. By oh, the way. it was miserable. And was they the, would... Uh, you, know, I don't, you, were, you were getting up at the butt crack of dawn and doing this shit? A lot, a lot of times, yeah. Like on the weekends, uh, they would do... I don't know if every radio station was like this, but Entercom certainly was, at least in Boston where um, we would do events on the weekends, sometimes like these trade shows and shit where they wouldn't, they would assign, you know, one group of four people to do it all day. So it was a, you know, 14, 15 hour event. And you're supposed to get paid like overtime or double time, whatever the laws here in Massachusetts are. Um, But they wouldn't allow us to put it in that way. And they would schedule us for like more than 40 hours a week, which we weren't allowed to do as part-time employees. So (laughs) they would just like completely fuck with the numbers. And I was like, how do you not see this is a horrible way to treat minimum wage? This is slave labor. (laughs) Yeah. They really got you by the balls because they know you want to be part of the radio station so badly. It's good exposure. We could get you on EEI. Would you like that? I got to say, being on the radio, so my one of my buddies here in Rochester interviewed for a job after these uh, radio hosts got fired for being racist on the air. And uh, I asked him on the interview when he goes, I wouldn't take this job if they offered it to me. It doesn't pay any money. The radio assumes that you're going to be on the air every day so you can promote other things that you're doing so they can pay you jack dick. Right. And if you're a comedian, you can promote your comedy shows or, or write books or whatever you're going to do that's going to actually supplement your income from being on the radio. It's like, well, that, that's shitty. Radio's, radio's the one business that has consistently failed year after year, and their failure has grown yeah. every year. And they say, like, I don't get what we're doing wrong. And they just keep doing the same shit. Yeah, I don't get it. We keep playing the same 13 songs they all love. What's the problem? Why are they tuning in anymore? Yeah, we fire everyone that says anything remotely interesting. Yes, as soon as we get press, 
People right. want to tune in. That person's gone. From it. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's a really good business model we have. Uh, so I also have to ask you about the great Tom Myers. And I don't even, I don't know. I saved this for last because I don't know how much of my audience even knows who Tom Myers is. Again, oh, patreon.com slash blind Mike. We did uh, two full hours on Tom. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and um, uh, so you can check that out. But you wouldn't, he's not a comedian you would know. How did you guys discover him? Through Calm Down. Okay, I figured. Yeah. So uh, how has Tom marketed himself so wrong despite getting criticisms from guys like you, guys like uh, Nick Mullen, all these comedians that bash him and tell him, hey, if you marketed yourself as the worst comedian in the world, you would be enormous. <laughs> So the, the winning formula for what makes a great reoccurring segment on who are these podcasts, the guys that we really focus in on in the shows, we really focus in on again and again is a lack of self-awareness. Yeah. When you get somebody and like guys like you and me can't even figure, we can't even fathom it. Just right. like you have all these people telling you what to do, giving you good advice and you can't possibly take it. You just lack self-awareness and Tom Myers, Holy shit, that guy is constantly tweeting out his jokes and he's running a podcast, Tom Myers versus the rest of the world. He was doing Politipod for a while. His jokes are awful. Nobody <laughs>, laughs at them and he thinks he's an actual comedian and he'll tell you to your face that he's a stand-up comedian. That's his job. But it's even okay. his his titles are awful because like I pointed out when we listened to his podcast, it's Tom My it could have easily just be Tom Myers versus the world. Yeah. Why is it Tom Myers versus the rest of the world? Yeah, you're not fighting yourself. We get it. We understand that. We or that. make America innate again yeah. as a sentence doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, I can't. He, he named one of his comedy CDs, Make America Innate Again. Did, it, did he not bounce it off of anyone? <laughs> Does he not have a friend in the world? Hey, what do you think about this title? I don't think it makes any sense. I, I get that it rhymes. <laughs> with the saying but well that's i i you know you mentioned it but i think the frustrating thing for me is like i have i'm sure at times i lack self-awareness for sure, sure but, but i think my real achilles heel is like too much self-awareness to the point where if 10 different people tell me 10 different things i'll try to do all of them so yes. it baffles me the idea of not doing a single one of them <laughs> oh dude tell me about it i've gotten to a point now and thank god for this because we have enough places on the internet that talk about the show between Reddit and Twitter and our discord and Facebook groups and whatever that I can't keep up with it anymore. And it's the best thing for me possibly because yes, everything that somebody says about the show, I'm like, Oh shit, they're right. Oh my God. I can't believe I did yeah, this. Yeah. I got to stop doing that. And not everybody knows how to run a successful podcast. In fact, most people don't. So it's probably better to not listen to those people, but people like you and me, we, we can't help it. We're like, Oh, you're right. I suck. Damn it. I gotta do better. <laughs> What's the big Carl criticism? I know you say smile talking a lot, which I can, I know what they mean by that. It doesn't, it's never bothered me though, really. Oh, I don't think that's a criticism now. I, I obviously I'm having a lot of fun on the show. Yeah. So, so I don't think that's what the issue is, but I've got tons of criticism over the year. A lot of it is the content of the show, like what we're talking about. And it's, not enough Patrick Michael. It's too much Patrick Michael. It's not enough Opie. It's I never want to hear about Opie again. Right, it's right. the shows that we pick to review. Uh, a lot of it is just like the, the content that, that we choose to, to put together. It's funny because this is another thing I had to realize through you know, therapy and all that type of shit where uh, <laughs> I, I would get so mad at these people that criticize the show or, or it would just make fun of me in some way or whatever. I would get like, you know, indignant about it and angry. Yeah. And then at a certain point, I kind of had to realize, like, I'm doing a show where I just shit on old other radio shows or podcasts or old sitcoms or whatever the fuck I'm making fun of. I'm making fun of their work. <laughs> so why why am I so mad that someone else is doing it to me? So fortunately, I've always kind of known that because I'm a shit talker and I've yeah. treated everything in my life like it's a roast. So I've always kind of appreciated people bash me back. But it's funny because I have noticed from time to time there'll be like a guy who just hates everything that I do. And they're in the, the subreddit and they're posting on every fucking thread and they're in our discord while we're doing the show live telling me that I suck. And then at some point they go away and I go, Oh, 
where did he go? You're not listening <laughs> yeah. anymore. And that's when you realize you're like, no, we, we need all of these people to make it work. The people who, who like what you do, the people who claim they don't like what you do, but they listen anyway. Right. Uh, it, it is funny how you, you I don't know, it, it's almost a necessary evil yeah. to have those people who are critiquing you nonstop. Have you ever felt uh, you've gone not too hard on someone, but um, how am I trying to phrase this? Have you ever gone after a podcast that like afterwards you're like, they didn't deserve it because they have, you know, 40 listeners or something like that? I think so. But the times when I'm displeased with my content is when I get personal. I, I remember I had the guys from Revenge of the Sis on my show, ROTC. They have a big YouTube channel. And we were talking about Fighter and the Kid. Oh, okay. And what I try to do is I try to critique the podcast like this is the show they're doing this is why it sucks those guys knew all about like brian callen's personal life and issues with ex-wives yeah. and kids and i'm like whoa 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 what's going on right now like that's not the goal of my show is to say someone's a shitty husband or that their kids are weirdos like and when shit like that happens that's what I, that's what i feel bad like i think we went too far that's well not that's the- where that's where jocktober would lose me is yeah. uh you know they loved the facebook like shutting down people's facebook pages and shit like that but I always kind of hated that they the some of the posts they would uh, promote and laugh at, and I don't give a fuck that they're laughing at it. But for me, it kind of uh, did what they were doing a disservice when like uh, some of the pests would be like they would find out shit about this lady's kid or yeah. go after her weight or something like that. Because I was like, well, now you're not attacking the show anymore. Now you're going after these people <laughs> that were just sitting in their studio minding their own business. Right, and actually when the Facebook pages would get taken down. I always thought that was really funny because I would I would me try too, to jump too. on and see what people were posting. And I just remember the funniest meme ever is Hulk Hogan drop kicking the twin towers and knocking over the towers. I texted my buddy uh, last Saturday uh, <laughs> that also listens to ONA, and I said, "How how mad do you think people would get if I tweeted that picture on September 11th?" <laughs> that was the funniest thing. I just remember you know Sam Roberts would always lose his shit over that. <laughs> And so that part w- was funny, but you're right. It's now you're fucking with their business and their company and their livelihood like that, that kind of stuff. I, I try to avoid that type of thing. Yeah. Like, I, I had people trying to get me fired. So uh, I don't take it lightly when I think the internet, like we can all come on here and goof on each other. I'll make fun of you, make fun of me back. Great. All fun and games. As soon as you start getting into real life and I had people dox me and then try to get me fired and, there was tens of thousands of people all tweeting at the company that I oh, really? partner at because of the podcast, because of the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Because we made fun of a podcast. Oh, that, that's another reason you'd like uh Minahan, by the way, he got run out of EEI by it's the only example I can think of. That's this extreme. This guy, Bob Murchison, mm-hmm. who would relentlessly one guy every day record their show, cut up clips, take them out of context, email sponsors, um email people that worked like just with enter like hate that shit it was an unbelievable effort by this one guy this you know just lifeless human being and that it, it's it's beyond cancel culture it's a thing i've never seen before it's unreal right yeah that, so that that's the shit that i have no tolerance for that at all and when people dox me or come after me or threaten lawsuits in real life that's when i actually get really pissed off i i have a lot of fun with the show and it's it's a very it's funny because the people act like we're assholes and yet all we do is just laugh for two, <laughs> two and a half hours straight every yeah, Saturday. Yeah. It's so much fun. And if, when you laugh along with us, we all have fun together. Uh, but I do get really pissed off when people try to get people fired or, or try to go reach out to sponsors and try to ruin people's livelihoods. Like what's your end goal that I would lose my job and have to sell my house and you know, my family has to suffer. Like, what, are you, what are you trying to accomplish here? I'm confused what the punishment needs to be for this. I don't, I mean, just with all that shit, like just before uh, we started recording, I saw someone going after Norm McDonald on Twitter saying he like harassed women and shit. And I was like, oh yeah, I saw, I saw that shit too. Yeah. It's pretty weird to wait till like this week <laughs> to bring that up. <laughs> Yes, correct. I don't think anyone has anything bad to say about Norm McDonald. I've never heard anyone say anything bad about the guy. I know he has a gambling problem, but right. other than that, I've never heard anyone say anything bad. Then the guy dies pretty young, and th- that all of a sudden you're gonna be like, by the way, he was an asshole. Like you had your chance. Yeah. Keep it to yourself now. 
Were you a big uh, Were you a big Norm fan? Oh, huge! Yeah, I, I don't know. It's funny. I don't know anyone who wasn't a huge Norm fan, uh, except for my buddy Kaya, who is Turkish and lives in Germany, and shot me a note saying, "What is this boomer humor? I don't, I don't get it. Can you explain it to me?" Oh, really? Yeah. So I well, it's another country, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's a generational thing, or maybe it's uh, you know growing up in Germany. I don't know. Yeah, I, there there was. I think there were just some people that m- didn't get it for whatever reason. Like I, I think he was too smart for a lot of people in a lot of ways. Like you know, I can't imagine being a person that watched the Bob Saget roast and didn't understand what Norm was doing. That's but they're what, out there. They what exist. Kaya, that's what Kaya sent to me. He sent me that video, and he goes, "I do not get this." And I had to explain <laughs> to him. That he's goofing on the entire thing. <laughs> that that was his way of saying, I don't even want to be here. This whole thing sucks, which was hilarious. Uh, Norm, Norm listing off the uh, bird characteristics of Greg Giral- Giraldo <laughs> and saying, ladies and gentlemen, this man is for the birds. Might be the funniest, the hardest I've ever laughed in my life. I'm with you on that. <laughs> it's so funny. He couldn't even get the jokes out. He was just stumbling on it. It was, it was just really funny. <laughs> Oh, I didn't. I guess we said who are these podcasts enough, but I didn't promote. I know you guys have a Patreon and everything. We um, do. Anything else people should check out? Yeah. If you go to whoarethese.com, that's the website where we post all of our episodes. Of course, you can find who are these podcasts wherever you get your podcasts from. But on whoarethese.com, we have links to everything our Discord, where you can listen live. That's free every Saturday. If you want to go in there and troll me as we're doing the show, we have uh, our YouTube channel, we have Patreon. Supercast, which is if you don't like Patreon, that's another way to get the bonus episodes. We do two bonus episodes every single month. And um, yeah, the links to everything else, Twitter and all the places you can find us are all on there. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, if you like I, the free show we do every week, this comes up sometimes, but even just the shit we do on Patreon, where we find old TV shows, podcasts, radio shows, all that shit, and just trash it for an hour. Uh, if you like any of that shit, then you'd love who are these podcasts. Those guys do a great job. Um, oh, real quick, you mentioned the fighter and the kid. Yeah, you ever watch Brendan Schaub's stand-up special? Band? Oh, yeah, we we okay. played some clips of that. Oh, right, good. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> How undeserving is that guy of a Netflix special? Well, well so wow. that's uh, we we broke it down too, and we t- approached it from the angle of it kind of going back to the not getting too personal shit. Like, I don't think that's Brendan's fault. <laughs> I mean, I think really? a lack of self awareness is certainly there. But the idea that Showtime would give him, Showtime. he's going to shoot a second one in December, apparently. Oh, no. So now Showtime is saying, all right, get up there, kid. But they're handing him a bag of money. So, like, if, you know, if Netflix comes to me and says, Mike, we're giving you an hour. I'm like, all right, it's not going to be good, but I'll do it. <laughs> no, that, that, that's a good point. But we can still goof on him for sucking that bad. Oh, because- God, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that I would do that if I was that bad at comedy, personally. But it's, if it's pretty offering well, money. What are you gonna do? The the part we mention all the time is that he does uh, an, an Asian accent in it, but the he's impersonating a real guy. Yeah. And then people started posting clips of the real guy. He speaks he speaks better English than I do. <laughs> so it's, it was just so a completely it's racist funny. fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, Mike, is this an actual uh, free show that we're doing right now? Yeah, it'll be so it'll be on Patreon tonight, and then uh, you'll be the free episode on Monday. Awesome, awesome! I really appreciate you having me on the show. I think you're doing a great job over here. I'm, I was, uh, like I said, I was listening to a bunch of episodes, and uh, you have a, a very good natural style. Oh, thank you, buddy. Podcast. You're too, you're too kind. No, uh, well, yeah, we'll make sure to tag you on Twitter when the episode comes out and everything. Go follow who are these podcasts for God's sake and uh patreon.com slash blind mike and we'll talk to you next time guys